So now it was all out there. The disciples knew who Jesus was. And they knew exactly what his next big move was going to be. He was heading to Jerusalem. And that's where it was about to go down. Amen. He had one less stop to make before he get to Jerusalem. Matthew 17. This is very significant. Oh, in Matthew 17, the Bible says, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. These were his three most trusted guys. Jesus said, I got one more stop to make on my way to Jerusalem. And they climbed this very high mountain. Now, it's to be understood that this mountain was a special mountain and it had significance. It wasn't just a random choice of Jesus. It was a specific mountain. Um, there was a region, this region where Jesus was, was known as Bashan. Well, you guys would say Bashan, but Bashan is how you properly say it, B-A-S-H-A-N. And that was throughout the history of Israel known as the mountain of gods. Why is it known as Har Elohim, mountain of gods? It's because... It is said that if you know the Genesis 6 narrative where it talks about how the sons of God came down from heaven and took daughters, heavenly beings, took women and married them and produced a hybrid race of people and, and polluted the planet, which is what led God to cleanse through Noah, right? And which is what caused giants and all these deformities to be upon the land. And some people think some weird things are still happening on the planet because that's happened more than once. But Genesis gives us the first Example of that. Now guess where these sons of God, when they came down, these, it's, it, in, in extra-biblical literature we learn that they came down upon this mountain. This mountain in the region of Bashan. And this is where they took an oath that they were going to do what they were going to do to the human race. And throughout the entire history of Israel, Bashan was known as a place of great darkness. It was known as a place called the domain of the dead. It was always associated with witchcraft and idolatry. It was like the epicenter from which all of this stuff was, it's like all of this stuff was spinning up. That was the epicenter for all the demonic activity in that region. It was a place that was particularly consecrated as a place of evil. Stay with me. I'm giving you a look behind the scenes before we get to Palm Sunday. Sinai was called the mountain of God. This is where Moses went to receive the commandments. This is where Moses would ascend when he wanted to speak to God. That was known as the place where Yahweh, our God, dwelled. Bashan was known as the mountain of the gods. So Sinai is holy, Bashan is unholy. You understand what I mean here? And here in the book of Psalms is something interesting. And I, so you understand where I'm going with this. In Psalm 68, it talks about Bashan and Sinai. And it says, why do you look with hostility, O many peaked mountains? That's speaking of the mountain of Bashan. Why do you look with hostility, O many peaked mountain? This mountain, God desires for his dwelling. Yes, Yahweh will abide in it forever. Guess where Jesus took the disciples? Come on, somebody. He took them to that mountain. The mountain is called Mount Hermon. The region is called Bashan. But the specific mountain is known as Mount Hermon. Jesus tells them, we're going up to that mountain. The one that my father declared that he wants for himself. The one that was formerly consecrated as the epicenter of demonic activity for that region of the world, and I would say the world itself, that is the mountain that God wants to redeem for his own purpose. <laughs> and so Jesus is not just stopping just randomly at places. He's saying, I've got to go to this place. And I'm taking my three strongest guys with me because what you're about to see is going to cause your hair to stand up on end. And he goes up to that mountain now, 
with this intention and this purpose in mind. And the Bible says in verse 2, Matthew 17, he says, He was transfigured or transformed before them, and his face shone like the sun, shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. If you remember Moses, who, by the way, shows up. He and Elijah show up there. But if you remember Moses, when he came down from Sinai, when he came down with the tablets and with the commandments, the Bible says his face also shone like the sun. So much so that he had to wear a veil over his face because the people couldn't stand to look at him as he walked in the glory of God. Here on this mountain that was known as evil, Jesus chose to reveal his glory to his disciples. He's making a statement that this place that was once consecrated for evil, hallelujah, is the place where I now stand. I've placed my feet upon it, explaining to you just by my presence that this mountain now belongs to Yahweh. It belongs to the God of heaven. And I'm going to show you just what I mean. Here I'm going to reveal my glory to you. And my face will shine just like Moses' face shone when he came down from Sinai. I think that was pretty good. I think if you're following me, that's some pretty good stuff. I'm just teaching. But I think that's so powerful. If you always read the transfiguration and never understood what was going on, that's what's going on. Jesus is reclaiming territory for the Father. And it speaks to something I shared last week at Nikeo Church, saying that God doesn't just die for people. He dies for this world. He dies for the things that he loves. He dies for the systems of this world, too. He, he comes to redeem. For God so loved the systems of this world. He's redeeming everything that's been affected by sin. And it would make sense that God would want to redeem a place that becomes the epicenter for evil activity and consecrate it for himself. Hallelujah. And the Bible says there appeared to him Moses and Elijah talking with him. And if you read Luke's account in Luke chapter 9, it says, They spoke of his death, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. They spoke of his death, which he's about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Not as a misfortune that's about to happen to him, but something he was about to accomplish. His death is checkmate. <laughs> now maybe no maybe his death is check and Sunday morning is <laughs> and he said and I don't know what Moses the Bible doesn't say what Moses and Elijah tell him but I imagine we're telling him you've come this far for this purpose you were born you've done well come on somebody where the first Adam failed in the garden you overcame in the wilderness Look how far you've come. One more step to take. Come on, somebody. I don't know what they were telling him, but I imagine they were telling him, go on, go on, you got this. And Jesus leaves from there. He said to his disciples, listen, let me tell you all something. Don't say anything to anyone about this until after I'm finished what I'm doing. 